Um, I'm sure we've lost a few <laughs> stragglers somewhere. Anyway, um, some of the plants that I grow on the ground layer are um, evergreen members of the blackberry and raspberry family. And there's two different ones here either side of me. Um, this is the one that was by the gate. Korean raspberry, Rubus tricolor. Um, so it doesn't have thorns, it just has hairs on the stems. And uh, this is Nepalese raspberry, Rubus nepalensis to my left. And these are fantastic ground covering plants, evergreen, uh, flowering now as you can see, uh, and um, produce raspberry like fruits in um, sort of mid July right through August. Um, I wouldn't put this one in a small garden because it's probably too vigorous. You know, it, it does need some management uh, to keep it uh, from going where you don't want it because it, they, they, they're, these are tip layering plants, so, so they'll produce arching growth and where they hit the ground they need your root. Um, so obviously you, you have to, with plants like this you need to define a boundary for it, you know, to make them patrol that a couple of times a year just to make sure it's not going where you don't want it. It's not, it's not a lot of work, it just needs to be in your consciousness to do that. Um, this one is particularly good in fruiting in shade, you know, Rubus tricolor seems better really than the other one. But, um, uh, but the Rubus nepalensis is a lower plant as you can see uh, and doesn't spread quite so, uh, with quite so much vigour. Uh, but they both love shady conditions, and there's a number of others as well related to these. Um, and I mean, you know, as much as possible, I'm trying to keep the soil covered with plant growth all year. You can't do that everywhere, of course, because some of the things I want to grow are not evergreen. Um, uh, in which case, you know, I'm trying to make sure there's enough dead stem matter as well to, there to self-mulch in a way and keep the soil protected because plant growth or you know uh, or, or, or a mulch of dead stems really protects the soil well in winter um, so uh, and that if the soil is protected you'll get better soil structure you'll lose less nutrients you know lots and lots of advantages and everything else will benefit everything in the soil will, will benefit so um, you know there's, it, they're, they're doing a really good job in terms of soil protection as well um, looking behind me, you can see um, there's quite a lot of red currants actually under here. Uh, red currants are absolutely fine in deciduous shade. They're probably our most shade tolerant of the, of the common, you know, bush fruits um, because they're very early into growth and they've done most of their growing by the time the, leaf, the trees above them have got into leaf. Um, uh, so you know, uh, they're absolutely fine. Gooseberries are pretty shade tolerant too. Black currants not quite so. You know, black currants need a little bit more. Um, uh, and this is uh, my other main mulberry tree, is this one above you here, um, and that's a, uh, an American variety called Illinois Everbearing. Now fruiting varieties of mulberries start fruiting um, within a year or two of you planting them out, very fast, whereas a seedling mulberry tree might take 15 years, so there's a big, big difference. So um, uh, if you're thinking of planting a mulberry, try and get you know a named fruiting variety otherwise you'll be waiting an awful long time um, and uh, those of you who don't know mulberries the fruits grow like um, like longish blackberries in a way in, in terms of, of, of shape um, and size and um, you know we're slightly spoilt in a way by being used to picking things like apples and pears off trees uh, you know, those are big fruits and you can, you can take one, one pick and you get a decent amount in one, one handful. Um, uh, and of course those have been selected and bred for thousands of years to get to, to what they are now. Whereas a lot of the unusual fruits that I grow, things like mulberries or hawthorns for example, the fruits are much smaller. Um, uh, and you might instantly think that's a disadvantage, but, uh, but actually it's not necessarily. So, you know, the fruits of this, I'm not going to shimmy up this tree and try and pick individual fruits, you know, I haven't got time for that. I will actually put a tarpaulin down and shake the branches, all the right fruits come down all at once. And similar with things like hawthorns, uh, it doesn't take very long. Of course there's a few leaves to filter out, you know, that come down as well, and the odd spider, and the odd snail actually out of a, out of a mulberry tree, because they, they like grazing on the odd leaf up there. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, it doesn't take long, harvesting does not take long, just because they're small fruits. 
Um, and the, you know, the advantage of a lot of these unusual fruit trees is, because they haven't been highly bred to produce big fruits and to, to crop as massively as something like an apple tree, they don't get stressed. The reason why apple diseases are such a problem is because apple trees get stressed every year by overproducing because they've been, they've been selected to do that. Uh, and that stresses them and as soon as a tree is stressed it's very susceptible to all diseases going. So uh, trees like mulberries or hawthorns or some of the other unusual fruits I've got, um, they don't get stressed so they don't get diseases. There aren't any diseases, there aren't any pests that are a problem at all. Um, you know, so from that aspect, you know, um, they are, you know, much lower maintenance than things like apple trees or pears or plums for that.